Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. You look at him. Hello, welcome to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal Quok here. Today we're going to be talking about something really fun and international, intercultural, could be sensitive to some people depending on where you are from or your perspectives on dating. So we are talking about dating and intercultural dating is an interesting phenomenon because there are a lot of expectations, challenges, uh, miscommunications, not just the obvious language but body language and oh so many things. So let's open it up. We've got two great guests here. They are both grad students at UH with me but they come from very different backgrounds with lots of their own personal stories. So let me introduce them right now. Hello. Hey. Thank you for coming on. We've got Mark and Layla but let's break it up a little bit. Mark McCormick, welcome. Give us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, um, so I'm a graduate student at UH Manoa. I'm doing my PhD in international education. Oh. Um, and uh, I lived in China for almost nine years, uh, working over there with international students. Cool. Um, so I do have kind of an international background. In dating? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, definitely some experience there as well. Um, I am married. Uh, my wife is from Japan, and we have two children. My so son the fun's is, over? He's married? Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, that's who I am, and cool. thank you for having me today. Great. Look forward to hearing more about your life. Thank now, you. Layla, why don't you introduce yourself? Yes, so I'm a graduate student as well at University of Hawaii. I'm studying urban and regional planning. But I've been dating online for the last four years, and I've been tracking all of my dates on a spreadsheet for the past <laughs> four years. So I have a lot of data. And uh, I think my Asian American perspective could be interesting because of the multi multiple cultural lenses that I've been able to experience for myself as well as the people that I've encountered. Do you mind sharing which multicultural perspectives you represent? Yeah, so I'm Filipina and Vietnamese American, mm -hmm. um, but I grew up mostly in Los Angeles, okay. which is, a, as people would say, a melting pot. There are a lot of different kinds of people right. with different backgrounds. So I think I've been very fortunate to learn about different cultures through dating. Great. So I as well as here. We have an interesting plate here, right? We've got an yeah. Asian American gal who grew up in LA. We've got a white guy I'm white, yeah. but who lived in Asia for so long and has a Japanese wife and kids. And I guess I'm Asian American too, but I lived in Hong Kong for so long I'm more transnational. Uh, and I'm married to a white guy too, so what do you expect? Um, <laughs> right, so let's talk about this international dating and intercultural problem. What are the first things that come to your mind in terms of the uh, issues with cultural differences? Um, well, yeah, I, I think uh, I grew up in Boston, uh, okay. which was just maybe not as um, culturally diverse uh, as, as a place like Los Angeles or Hong Kong. Hmm. Um, and I grew up outside of Boston, actually. Um, so moving to China was a pretty big change for me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then I met my wife over there. And uh, because she's not Chinese, we were both foreigners dating in China. Um, so there was another added layer of, right. of cultural confusion sometimes as well, because uh, we both had been dating in China for a bit, uh, and then she was dating an American guy in China, and I was dating a Japanese person in China. So um, that was kind of difficult, but uh, we, we made it work, and, and uh, communication was kind of the biggest issue for us, um, because when we started dating, she didn't speak English, uh, and I didn't speak Japanese. So we right. were speaking in Mandarin, um, but we just had to speak very, very um, directly to each other, and it was it was all right. So And was language an issue? Obviously, you said that she didn't speak English, so what did you communicate in, and what are some kind of you know, challenge. Yeah, no, we, we, we were speaking Mandarin because we were both living in China. That's so, interesting. Um, so, yeah, when we first started dating, that, that's what we were speaking. And uh, it, it was actually a lot easier, I feel like, than a lot of my other relationships because we had to be so direct um, because we were both speaking in a, a different language than our, our native tongue. Yeah. Um, so when we talk, when I think about intercultural dating, and uh, I mean, there's definitely cultural aspects that we have between Japan and the United States and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, but, I don't want to sound like a gross stereotype. And forgive us for if we, we sound like we're just assuming things, but this is just coming from our personal perspectives. Sure. But there is a generalization that a lot of Japanese women, um, there's this joke about them saying no means yes. You know, that kind of flirtatious opposites where they play these games. And a lot of Asian girls do that. I don't know if you both agree. Oh, I think it, no means yes sometimes it's, in American culture as well. I yeah. don't think people are as direct. It depends on your experience. Right. But I do have to agree with you, Mark, that, I mean, I was in a relationship with someone from another country for seven years. And we had to be direct because we could not, there were a lot of things that you just had to say straight up because otherwise there would be so much misunderstandings. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's usually a lot of nuance when you're dating someone and there's kind of flirtatious back and forth and stuff yeah, like that. Right. And a lot of that gets lost in translation when you're talking in a different language yeah, or you're coming I agree. from a different culture. Mm -hmm. Do you guys um, have any so, specific examples of that? Uh, you guys um, I mean, I, I guess, uh, okay, so in the United States, if, if, if you're dating someone, uh, for example, Netflix and chill. Right, okay. which is not anything that I've ever experienced because I left before Netflix was a thing. Okay, um, bad. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, but I, I do feel like that carries a pretty strong connotation with the date. Like, yeah. we're going to come over and watch Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Whereas um, myself or uh, other foreigners that had gone to China would sometimes uh, kind of use that as an invitation. Do you want to come over and watch a movie, that type of thing? Um, and it, I think there are different. Um, you know, one time my friend did that, and the girl brought two friends. Okay. Uh, which, which is, uh, <laughs> popcorn. You know, right, yeah, it was, it they was really, not, literally thought it was just to watch a just movie. To watch a movie, right. right. So I think like th there's okay. things like that that gets lost, lost in translation sometimes. Right. Well, you don't and, watch the movie. And, yeah. and the other thing that I think is distinctly American is like uh, sarcastic mm. humor, right? So sometimes you'll say something like, "Oh well, like you never washed the dishes," you know, and I mean, it, and it's a way to tell them something, right. but they may not they might not get that and so sometimes you just have to say hey listen um could you just wash the dishes <laughs> because I've been washing them. <laughs> and sometimes you don't want to spell it out because yeah. then it like ruins the mystery of things sometimes. Like, oh, can you can you touch me there? Or right. like, you know, do you, I mean, maybe that's not a cultural thing. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. no but I, I think you're we, correct. Yeah, I, yeah there's, there's definitely, that level of directness uh, in the United States, at least in my experience, might be kind of a, a, a turn off. It might not be something people are very interested in mm. when they're first starting to date. But um, yeah, when you're when you're trying to cross cultural boundaries, you never know how to be, if you want to be too direct. Is, yeah. is, is there a too direct? Is, is there, yeah. am I leaving this too much up in the air yeah. when he wants. Um, so Can we talk kinda... about cultural sex now that we're kind of there? Like, how does the intercultural aspect play into this? Like, what are some expectations when you date somebody that's from, not from your own culture? Mm -hmm. Are there kind of like boundaries where you have to go, oh, well, or is yeah. it Yeah, okay, so in, on the American side, I would say that even if I'm dating someone who is technically American, right. but also like me, multi-ethnic uh -huh, in uh -huh. some other way, you kind of have to dig and find out like how they were raised and to figure out what is acceptable and not acceptable in their culture because it's not just a given that just because we're both american that you know you know we're going to just hook up you know right. and at, on the first date or on the third date there's like this uh, this third date rule right but it may not be that way is that the way it is now i don't know is there, <laughs> i don't know i think it's too old to talk I, about yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i think i think the um, there is still this joke around the third date being the date that you finally have sex uh -huh. but um people i think are either following that or not it's it, you know i personally think you you do it when you it feels right and when you feel good about it i i do think like when i was living in china um f first of all can we, we were talking about before we started i yes. think there's more variation um in cultures than between cultures if that makes sense so like i i think if you go to china you're going to get such a vast different ex number sure. of experiences because right. it's such a, a a diverse country in and of itself right um but I do feel like, if I was speaking broadly, mm -hmm. that, um, that I do feel like, from my experiences in the United States, or my friends' experiences, or what I kind of know about the culture here, that uh, there is kind of like a, a hookup culture that might be a little more uh, fast and loose over in the United States, whereas mm -hmm. in China, I feel like there's much more of a, a traditional, um, this is how we're supposed to date, and we're supposed to kind of follow this um, theater of, yeah. of mm -hmm. how we're supposed to go through these steps. And, and what's interesting too is that it's not just um, Western culture that, I mean, you can't lump Western cu culture sure. altogether. Yeah, sure. I have a friend from the UK and um, she told me when she's like, I don't understand how Americans date. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, you can be dating a guy like for s several months even and not even know where you guys are at. Like, so technically, mm -hmm he could be seeing other people, like he could be sleeping with other people, and it's okay because there was never the, the until you have the talk, right? And <laughs> I, I looked at her and I was like, well, how do you guys do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the yeah, UK? Yeah. And, and, she, said, yeah, and she said, well, we date one person at a time, and like, you know, you see them, and then if it doesn't work out, you break up with them, and then you see the next person. And for me, as an American, I'm like, that just sounds so inefficient. Like, I think, you know, there is something to be said about seeing multiple people at one time, but obviously the flip side is that maybe, um, especially with our culture of online dating, you don't really invest in any one of them very much. Do you much. think online dating kind of perpetuates this 
polyamorous type of um, culture that seems to be increasingly popular yeah. now. So Mark can't talk about online dating because yeah. he didn't uh, have the beautiful privilege. <laughs> but I'm sure you've had your chance to Well, I, I was saying uh, right before, uh, uh, last week I was in San Francisco, okay. and I was talking to a different couple that started dating in 2013, okay. which is when my wife and I started dating, okay. which is really when uh, apps started becoming a big thing. Okay. Um, I, I know we had uh, different websites for dating in like 2010, 2011. Like, uh, right, there was, what, what, what were some of the ones? Like, like what was like your biggest first one? Oh, uh, eHarmony, yeah, e -Harmony, Match, right. then Tinder, OkCupid okay was right. big, plenty of fish. The apps fish. really started, uh, yeah. right, right. so I never got to use them, so I don't know. Oh, like, yeah. Swiping well, so, right, I know, <laughs> don't know what yeah, that means. Yeah, no, yeah. swiping right. Yeah, so so my personal take on it is that it's kind of like, uh, Aziz Ansari talks about this in his book, Modern Love, but essentially the more choices you have, the harder it is to feel content because you're always thinking maybe there's someone better, right? And so um, online dating and app dating has yeah. allowed us to literally like match with so many people, but then you're not really investing in any one of them very deeply because you're thinking about the next best thing. That kind of feeds right into our consumption um, kind of mentality, especially in the US, right? right? It's like you just need to get and get and then just kind of sort out there and then it's never enough. Yes. That's really kind of a scary place we are in. Yes. in and and you're, you're seeking for this level of perfection that may not actually exist. So even right. if you're on a date with someone who's really cool, you're thinking, well, maybe there's someone even better out there. <laughs> and then you go home and you're like swiping again, you know, and looking for the next. So when you date online, do you date, do you, are you sourcing, you're looking for somebody who you just want to have a good time with or somebody that you really hope to find like a soulmate for the future? Whatever comes in your plate, you just take it as it goes. I mean, what's the idea? behind it. Oh, that's online. great. Uh, that's a great question because I think all of us go into it with different expectations and different needs and it's mm -hmm. very important to clarify what it is that you're looking for and to be okay with it. If if you're just looking to uh, have a good time with someone, that's fine. Just uh, be clear about that with a person. Is it that usually you're spelled out though? Like the second. I would say if you don't spell it out, it's um, there's going to be some hurt feelings. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I like to spell it out. Like so, what I do is that when I'm um, out on a date with someone, I'm, I tell them. Um, directly like, hey, I'm looking to be in a long-term relationship with Doesn't someone. Doesn't that scare them away? Not necessarily, because I say, I'm looking to be in a long-term relationship with someone, not necessarily you, but that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> well, gee, that makes yeah. me feel good. Yeah, <laughs> because it's not, it's, there's no pressure. Like, it's just like, it's I want though, you yeah. to know what, what I'm looking for. And the guys maybe don't want to either. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, that, I would actually really like that. Yeah, guy. really? Uh, well, well, because, yeah, no it, it's, it's not putting a lot of pressure on me. It's saying, okay. this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, maybe not necessarily you are that person that's going to be that, but just there's that level of, of so understanding and communication right. As if, and then it, up front. Yeah, and it allows a guy to say, uh, well, you know, I'm, I just got out of a relationship. I'm not looking for anything serious. And then I'll right. be like, okay, that's good to know. And, and, and both you guys say face at that point. Yeah. You don't have to choose him or not choose him. He, doesn't, yeah, he knows yeah. you're not looking to it, Right, exactly. Yeah, that level. As opposed to three months down the line, yeah, right. Yeah. finding right. out that he was not looking to be in a relationship. Right. You know, this is primarily a very Western kind of centric uh, perspective that we have choices like that, but many cultures don't have mm, the choices. That's true. Let's go the other way. Like, how do we feel about being, it's not a reduction, is it? Like, if you had to be with one person for the rest of your life, and then your parents put that on you, can you make it work? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, well there, were, there were definitely experiences that I had in China where I had, I had uh, been interested in dating or going out with someone. Uh, and, and, and their more parents than expected once, you to but, marry them? But more than once, their parents said they, <laughs> yeah. they didn't want them to marry a, a foreigner. Or they uh, didn't want them, mm. Because they didn't think I was going to set up my life there, and they thought uh, maybe yeah, I'd be really. taking their child away or right. something like that. Um, now, that could have just been an excuse or to, just to say like no to me. Or is it just their is purity right. of their blood? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. Gee, I hope, I hope not, yes. Reverse racism. <laughs> um, but definitely, definitely more than more than once, I, I didn't pass the parental test. Which, uh, so did you stop dating because of yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, and I actually was in a relationship where the guy's family did not want us to be together because I was not the same ethnicity as him. Ah. And that was interesting, too, because I'm like, we're in America. Like, why does this matter? But it still but does. But it does, yeah. and you opened up a huge point, and what I'm going to do we're taking a quick break, but let's hold that thought. Don't go away. We're going to talk about how racism kind of comes into play in intercultural and inter-ethnic dating. Really interesting stuff, so don't go away. 
Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Quack Talk. I'm Crystal here discussing dating with Mark and Layla here. And we just started before the break. Get into like a heated uh, concept of how racism comes to play with dating. Let's carry on with that. Layla, what kind of relationships or what ethnic backgrounds, if you don't mind sharing um, in your experience and how that's affected kind of like maybe the relationship process and why? Um, okay, so. It's interesting because in America there are just so many different um, backgrounds. So I've dated, you know, guys from you know who are uh, Middle Eastern and uh, Latin, African American, and you know some cultures are more accepting of different um, different ethnicities, yeah. but others are not. And it's you know at first I would be upset about it, but on the other hand, I realize that there are also traditions and um, histories that are just like really embedded within those cultures and I've learned to just accept and respect that. Mm. It becomes complicated though because if you do have true love and you think that will overcome everything, there are some realities where like religious aspects, yes, right? Religion. And lots of other, other traditional aspects that you have to kind of respect. Yeah, I, I personally speaking, I had been kind of nervous when I went to meet my wife's family for the first time uh -huh. because they're in rural Japan um, and, and I don't know if they have a lot of white guys walking around over there. <laughs> um, but my, my wife's cousin had lived in the United States for a while, and she had, she married a guy uh, from here. Um, so I think he took the, the majority of the, you know, he was the first okay. four, four kind of showed up. Yeah. yeah, I owe him a 24-pack of uh, something, <laughs> okay. because uh, I, I think he might have yeah. taken the lumps. Um, uh -huh. But um, yeah, I, I personally, at least in my relationship right now, it's, it's one that I don't really worry about when it comes to, to racism or stuff like that. But I've definitely um, seen as as a, a white guy who's friends with people uh, from the United States or other foreigners in China, uh, the fetishization, mm. fe the feti fetishization, yeah, yeah. Thank you. the kind of Orientalism. Um, yes. Yeah, I've definitely seen that before. And um, I've and experienced that before. <laughs> I mean, how many people ask you, "Oh, how come your English is so good?" Oh yeah. I hate that. Yeah. It's like what, what? And, you know, you and, think. And, and I was just actually talking about it earlier that how um, you know sometimes a guy's first question to me is where I'm from, and if I tell him California, it's not good enough. Like they want. Want to know where I'm, where I'm really from, you know? Oh. And then if I say, oh, you know, my family's from the Philippines, he's like, oh, I've dated a Filipina girl, you know? Oh, and, no. <laughs> yeah, and so cringy. Yeah, right. So and and, and, and yeah, I know I know they're trying to connect with me, but yeah. it's just not the right way to connect with me. Okay, can you share yeah, don't, to don't people do that. how? Don't what are some no-nos to intercultural dating? Don't ask a girl where she's from. <laughs> or and how do they ask? It's just, um, okay, so it's okay to say, uh, if, if you ask where I'm from, like, be okay with whatever answer yeah, you do. Yeah, um, because it's your identity. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, exactly. And um, don't, not to generalize, like, oh, I've dated an Asian girl before. Like, okay, that's nice. I didn't need to know that. And um, <laughs> and, and again, it's, it's just a cultural sensitivity, right? Um, I may not be defining myself through my ethnicity all right. the time. So it's not me telling Mark, hey, where are you from? Are you Irish or German? Like, it's Yeah, really how come weird. it doesn't work the other way yeah, around? Yeah, it doesn't. Um, and I understand that, you know, we have our preferences in terms of, like, looks or whatever, and that's okay. Um, I think it's okay. Like, we like what we like. But um, the fetishization of, of our culture yeah. is, is... Where does that stem from? You know, you have to think back. Like, you know, this whole yellow fever thing where why some uh, white guys go to Asia to seek an, an Asian wife or just to have an, a relationship. What are those? You know, there are a lot of websites on that. Have you yeah. seen them? Yeah. Like, so well, I, I was telling you guys before, I've been in China. I've at Starbucks different times. Uh -huh. I've seen... 
um, through a translator, yeah. um, a, a guy asking a woman, they're trying to set up a, a, a marriage through oh, one of these websites, right. and the translator's asking the questions. Um, and I, I don't know why he's there. I mean, I never uh, would buy the guy coffee afterward. I just kind of was. Yeah, like, weird yeah it's weird enough. It's I just, weird enough. You know, I, I, be there, I but, think um, I speak for most people that we don't want to be stereotyped, right? We don't want, but why are we? Well, because there, there are these generalizations about Asians, let's just speak from my own personal experience, Asian women, and I remember I was dating a guy who was really upset because he was like, you're not as submissive or quiet, oh that, you know, and, and def, def, you know, deferential as, you know, what I thought Asian women should be like. I guess I was too talkative or something. It sounds like a him problem. I man. know, yeah. but it, so there are, there are assumptions about Asian women and they may not be true. And where do they come from? So Mark, when you were in Asia all those years, did you see when you were dating Asian women from Asia, did you see that, can you kind of distinguish between Asian American outspokenness like us with a, you know, fragile, passive porcelain doll that's I mean, not supposed to talk when she's well, not supposed I mean, to down feet. Yeah. <laughs> we'll cook for you and like, do everything for you. I'm not saying anything. Um, <laughs> and, um, I, I do think culturally there are there are differences between the United States. I mean, if you spend a lot of time in Hong Kong, yeah. um, Hong Kong and mainland China are vastly different, right. right? which is different from Japan. Right. So I do think there are cultural differences uh, with the way the men and the women are supposed to act. Um, but again, I think I think that's kind of undergoing a lot of change in China, especially. You're getting a lot of people that are studying in the United States for right. four to six years, and they're going back to China. Um, so it, it really um, depends, I guess, what, where you are. I think if you're in the countryside in rural mm -hmm. China, as opposed to the city center. I was in the third largest or fourth largest city center in China, so it's very urban. Um, so I think it really depends on where you are. But I, I definitely think there are cultural differences, right, yeah. in, in, in how people are supposed to act um, and how people are brought up to act. And yeah. that, that can go back to education. It can go back to... Um, their parents and go back to numerous things. True. But I definitely think there are differences. Because I remember dating some guy in Hong Kong a lot years ago, and he very Hong Kong, and he was driving me around. Maybe we had a dinner once or twice. Then the next thing he does, he he goes and asks me whether he should buy these pair of shoes. I'm like, who can? I don't care. We'll buy whatever you want. But he thought because I had dinner with him that he thought we were dating, and by dating I should be kind of helping him with his choices in life. It's like, wow. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, expectations again. Yes. And which is why I think it's really important to better understand someone, um, where they're coming from, um, because you know sometimes it's 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 nice too. It's nice to know that he was he was serious, right? Um, but creepy too. It, like, well, creepy, I mean, so yeah. much you're assuming within like a date. You see the third three date thing for the Western kind yeah. of uh, assumptions, but dating an Asian guy as opposed to an Asian American is very different too. I don't know. Have you ever dated an Asian American girl? I haven't. So, <laughs> so I, you know, I, 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 like, I can't. I can't comment on that. People like us, like. Going yeah. down on you and saying, "Mark, shut the," you know. Yeah, right, right, yeah, I, <laughs> you don't get that. From yeah, no, I can't. I can't comment on that. But uh, I can just comment on the vast, vast dating differences yeah. between when I was living in China and. It's, it's yeah. In Asia and the United States. It's so interesting because, like, as an Asian American, I you could say I have the benefit of dating more freely than mm -hmm. my Asian sisters in Asia, right? In general, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but actually, I've come to a point where I'm like, I'm overwhelmed. There's like too many choices. Uh, right? Going back to the choice problem. Yeah, and it's like. Uh, there are there. It seems to be the wild west where there are like no rules, and you have, you essentially have to figure it out by your, on your own and like trial and error. Whereas you know in other cultures, it's it's already set out for them. Yeah. It's like your parents choose for you. you and know? oftentimes they work. Yeah, you and make it work. I've come full got, circle. Like, I'm like maybe I should get a matchmaker to like match me, which is like totally like old school Chinese, right? To have a matchmaker, match me with someone, you know? But it, I have to be my own matchmaker, essentially. Yeah. And you know, I'm very fortunate. I'm dating like a great guy right now, but it, right took, now. Over, <laughs> right now. it took over 130 first dates in the last four years to like get to this point. Yeah. So you think with all the experience you've had dating different types of people, or just dating in general, you'd think you can narrow it down to how you maneuver the dating process, but kind of not, huh? I mean, every process is its own experience, yes. what would but, you say? But, well, yeah, but like I told you guys before, when my wife and I were on our third date, I was, I had, I had dated enough that I, I knew that this was someone that I was very, very serious in. Uh, very, very, very uh, interested in. I was, yeah. I was very seriously interested in her. But you're also on um, the right stage in your life. Too. Correct. Yeah. True. There are a lot of I, elements. Good point. But, but I think she was as well, because I met my wife three years before that, um, and we didn't really date at all, um, uh, although I was interested in dating her at the time. It, mm -hmm. uh, 
not that she wasn't interested in me, it just didn't really work yeah. out. The stars didn't line up. Exactly. Um, but it, it worked out well this time. Um, but it was because of all the, the dating experience that I'd had before mm -hmm. that I knew very quickly, this is, uh, this is I'm pretty interested in, in marrying this person. Yeah. Okay. I, knew, I knew quite quickly. Uh, and I think she, she was in the same boat. Um, yeah. it, it worked out. Well, for us and our kids, obviously, because they're you, alive now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah. I'm really happy for you. Um, the concept, Leila, you, in your book, you say it's the modern girl. What's the title of your book again? Oh, yes, it's called Swiping Right, uh, A Modern Girl's Guide to Digital Dating. So I, I ask you this, what is the definition of a modern girl? And, and Mark, even from being in Asia, the modern girl in Asia is quite what people don't assume now, right? So let's yeah, talk about okay, that. Yeah, okay, so um, I talk about the modern girl as a girl who has a, a lot going on, and she has a career, and she, or she's like studying, and she doesn't really have time to like go out and all date. the time and date. So <laughs> essentially, I created a process based on my own experience on how to date efficiently through online dating. So it's essentially a nine-step process so that a girl can Wait, nine steps. Nine steps. That, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, that's a lot of work. Iterative steps, but essentially, so that you're going through um, online dating profiles with a plan, as opposed to like just willy-nilly picking anyone, right? And um, and the reason why is because you know we have a lot going on, and you really, if you want to be um, in a relationship with someone, you have to carve out that time, and you have to make that effort. Um, otherwise, you're going to be wasting your time on on really. So um, do your homework before approaching the process. Yeah, yeah. And it's also um, it's very easy to get dis, um, disappointed and disenchanted with the pro discouraged. Yeah. Because you know you'll go out on a date and there's just no chemistry or you know yeah. the person was boring or whatever, right. right? And then you'll be like, oh, there are no good people out there. Uh. And so what I try to do is put everything into perspective and show girls that this is a process and it's supposed to be hard. You know, yeah. if you're looking for someone you're gonna spend the rest of your life with, right. like, you're gonna have to work a little bit more and you have to be clear about what it is that you're looking for. Mm. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's why. It's and I think less is more after what we talked about. Too many choices may not be a good thing and sometimes simple things are, are precious. In our limited time left, do you both have some suggestions to people when we mentioned no-nos before, things that can, you know, help you along the dating process based on your birth experiences, interculturally. Uh, yeah, I, I would just say communication is really key. Mm -hmm. um, and then being patient uh, with with someone that might be coming from a different cultural background than you are. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I when, my, when my wife and I first started dating, um, Japan and the United States are quite different culturally. Um, and uh, it, it required patience and it required a lot of communication. Mm. Um, but if you're dedicated to that, you can make it work and it's, it's fantastic and it's phenomenal. But uh, right. it, it definitely requires patience and communication. And I think that's just dating that's in part general. Of the process. That's just dating in yeah. general. But definitely when you have added different cultural yeah. aspects as well. So. Yeah, so um, in America, because even though there aren't any rules, I do think that there are um, best practices, and one of them is no ghosting on people. Okay. I think, and if you've never heard of ghosting, it's essentially like you just kind of disappear and like not mm. respond to someone after you know a few dates. And the reason why um, you shouldn't do that is because it can be disrespectful to yeah. that person, um, and they don't get the closure that they need so that they can move on. And if you've ever been ghosted on, you know what I'm talking about. Well, I think you have to check. Go check out Lila's book and go <laughs> online. Just be careful what you're doing. Be sensitive to cultural aspects from different people because, again, a lack of uh, communication, a lack of ig ignorance is a huge no-no in intercultural dating. So let's learn about each other and respect each other. Thank you, both of you, for your wonderful comments and input and good luck with everybody's dating life go out there and have fun and enjoy life but respect each other <laughs> Bye. thank you